other folks from camp said hello to my Uncle Bill yet. So remember what we did the other night? Maybe you could do that now. They learned, they learned something when we went up to camp and introduced ourselves. We've had some really good chats. And so is it okay for our new friends to say hi and give you their names? Hi. Yeah? Hello. <laughs> Cheers. You gotta, you gotta speak up. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Bill, hi. and others that I may not have met here yet. Uh, my name is Zoe Silliers, and so my parents are Claire Moore uh, and Philip Silliers, and my mother's parents are uh, Margaret Gibson and... Uh, I'm on his name right now. Um, Jerry um, Moore. And on my father's side, my grandparents are Peter and Barbara Silliers. Um, and so my family comes from Southern Africa. They've been there for 11 generations, and I'm the first generation immigrant to Canada. Um, and yeah, I've been involved here uh, for the last two, three weeks. Um, and I'm really excited. My intention um, in being here today and meeting people I mean, yesterday is really to listen and to work uh, to make to do what I can to help make the movement a place of more listening, um, encouraging that around everyone that I come across. So, yeah, and and thank you for for all that you've done um, in encouraging people to listen as well. I I. Um, yeah, very grateful to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Um, I'm Will's brother here, and uh, my parents are, are Joan Rosenberg and Dan O'Connell, who I think perhaps have been down here. Um, and then my mom's parents are Alvin and Gloria Rosenberg, and they come from Toronto on Huron territory and uh, my my dad's family is from Alberta um, Ellen and James O'Connell who were uh, originally from Cork Ireland oh my. yeah so they went quite away um, and I came down here to see what my brother's doing and see if I could help out a bit and um, yeah and it's been quite an experience listening to Katie talking and everyone talking and there have been a lot of good things to hear and especially you talking as well that was very nice to hear all those things and yeah well thank you <laughs> is Emily Peacock and my mother's name was Elena Peacock and she was born in Italy and then her dad was born in Italy his name was Sergio Scarabello and her mom was my grandmother was born in the Philippines and her name was Nora Alda and then my dad's name is Keith Peacock and he moved to Canada from England, where both his parents are from England, um, Betsy and Will Peacock. And yesterday was my first day at the blockade, and it's been an experience of learning, and I'm here to figure out a safe way forward, and I'm really grateful to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Bill. Hi. We met briefly the other day, but my name is Lisa Small, and my mom is Linda Roseman, and my dad is David Small, and my mom's parents are Evelyn Hecht and Sonny Roseman, and my father's parents are Harold Small and Sarah Yaverbaum. And I'm actually related to your friend Bobby and Saul Arbus. Oh, they're yeah. true. That's my my great grandmother is Annie Arbus, so they're my cousins. Oh, my. And um, my family is 
all Jewish and from Poland, Russia, Yugoslavia, um, all moving here at different times, but around like the 1920s, a lot of them just before World War II moved to um, Montreal and Mohawk Territory. And now I live in Lekwungen Territory in Victoria just, just recently. Um, and I'm really grateful to be here on that territory and thank you thank you for 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 welcoming us there was a man named bill big bill he was from new york city actually and um i asked him what are you doing in run for he says well i wound up here and he he became a carver, and I asked, I, asked him, I asked him about these people. He says, well, my people were from um, Eastern Europe, I think Hungary or someplace, someplace um, yeah, Budapest or thereabouts, and that they were Jewish, and they were displaced for some reason or the other during the last war, and they wound up in New York City, and he said to me, I think we sort of understand how Indians suffered, he says, because the thousands of people who came from Eastern Europe that landed in New York City all in 10 years forgot their Eastern European heritage and custom and became New York Jews, he said. And he said, we don't, we don't even speak our church church tongue anymore, he said, Yiddish or whatever it was, you know, and I thought that was so sad, you know, and he said, well, I became an Indian, Bill, he said, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay now, and he was a carver, he lived in Elliottsville down here mm -hmm. with his wife, <laughs> so I think we can reconcile, reconcile ourselves, you know, to our own creation of what we feel we need to be. And curiously, Bill Conley, I think, or Coonley or something like that, um, he um, found his own self-recreation in, in Indian art. So it's quite a world, really. I had another experience about, of, uh, he said, of, well, of the Holocaust and um, but this was the First World War, and I was um, here in Renfrew, and my next door neighbor, the mother, all played the accordion, and um, you know how an eight, ten-year-old boy asks, "What's your mom singing?" And her daughter, Lenore, said. She's singing a song in Yiddish. And I says, what's that? You know, of course, you know, you don't know what it is. She says, it's our church. She said. And then finally I researched that, or all, it takes a long time, long, a whole life to find out things sometimes. And what happened to that Jewish people, they were from northern Turkey, and they were evicted from Turkey into Romania or something like that, from Romania to um, the, oh, I forgot the name, but, and then from there to Russia, mm -hmm. and they, they were all shipped from country to country. Finally, they wound up in, in Finland, and then they... The war ended, and they didn't know what to do with these people in Finland. And the Canadian government said, well, we'll take them. And they wound up in Salmon Arm here, <laughs> of all things. And I thought, you know, we all humans have our treadmills, you know, our horror stories, you know, of how we 
the Indian Act is an old act, you know, an old act of political destruction of our, our beings to, uh, to uphold a, a dominant economy in one country or the other, you know, and it's so atrocious to realize that although we, um, are separate and different, our, our, I think our union, like Bill found, was in something to do with wood. <laughs> he carved beautifully and he was commissioned. And I think that's what we are here for, to, you know, find and preserve that which created us. Mm -hmm. A funny world sometimes, I think. Yeah. Especially when you realize that how things are so interlocked with each other. When you throw one thing off balance, you starve a killer whale to death, you know? It's so... <laughs> so inconsiderate and how we uh, fix that is I guess is to grow more trees and, or let our great mother grow them isn't that ever so neat in my uh, struggle on the reserve I didn't ask for anything I just kept my yard clean and half half asked kept looked after my house <laughs> and now I've got the only forested house on the reserve <laughs> and I realized that there may be a sublime message there, there to me. Somebody's caring for me, you know, mm -hmm. our great mother <laughs> and all my flowers in the front yard are wild flowers. <laughs> it's so it is a gift, you know. Yeah.